If you missed it and don't fancy watching the two hour long mammoth Google I.O. presentation, then fear not. I am here to run you through the five most exciting announcements. Let's start at the end as Google closed its presentation with a look at some new Google Glass Smart Eyewear. And a demo that proves that we really are living in that futuristic sci-fi world that we all dreamed of as kids. For a start, the latest Google Glass actually looks pretty normal. Previous generations haven't exactly been on the cutting edge of fashion, but these AR Google Glass prototypes look totally normal. But the really cool part is the live translation and transcription feature that Google showed off. Combining a whole bunch of tech that Google has been working on for years, these new glasses will allow you to have real-time conversations with somebody in a language that you don't even speak. As with all of these kinds of prototypes, we won't know how accurate or easy it is to use until we get our hands on them. But if you've ever used the subtitling feature inside of Google Meets, then you'll know that the real-time transcription is pretty good. Well, in English at least. So we have pretty high hopes for this technology. Technology. They also showed a demo of the live transcription, helping hearing impaired people to understand those around them. Google describes it as kind of like subtitles for the world. And if it works as advertised, it could be a real game changer. Needless to say, we can't wait to try it out ourselves once Google tells us when it's releasing, of course. Next up, Android 13 was announced, showcasing many refinements. Its design and improvements to notifications were just two. Google put a heavy focus on security at this year's keynote, and Android 13 applies the same focus. With a shout out to RCS, a text messaging standard, and Google Wallet improvements. There are plenty of refinements to Material U, Android's theme for Android 13. With music controls on your lock screen that will adapt to the colors that you've chosen, alongside the previously mentioned bigger focus on security. Also packaged in Android 13 is Google Wallet, a redesign of Google Pay. It will store your payment cards along with event tickets, parking space passes, vaccine cards, health insurance cards, flight passes, and a hell of a lot more. It's a one-stop shop for Android 13 users with an aim to replacing the wallet that you've been carrying around in your pocket. This also plans to include a digital driver's license in the US, debuting later this year. Google also mentioned that Android 13 is being tailored for tablets and foldable devices, which could of course hint to the Pixel foldable phone that we've been hearing so many rumors about. After the showcase of Android 13 came the new Pixel 6a. It's a budget spin on the Pixel 6 and actually has a surprising amount of its Big Brother's features. Though some downgrades in other areas do mean that the Pixel 6 will remain a key member of the line. The Google Pixel 6a costs just under 450 bucks and pre-orders start on July 21st. It comes packing an always-on 60Hz refresh rate screen, and the Google Pixel 6a's cameras are pretty decent too, packing a 12.2 megapixel f1.7 main camera and a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, all sitting within that now iconic Pixel chunky camera bar. The front-facing snapper is only 8 megapixels though, so don't expect to be taking any super high-res selfies here. Some camera features are carried over from the Pixel 6, including the Magic Eraser and Real Tone, for more accurately balancing portrait mode for people with non-white skin. You can also record video in up to 4K at 60fps, which is pretty impressive for this budget-friendly device. And keeping all of that tech running is a 4,410 milliamp hour battery, which according to Google will last over a day of use. We'll see. Beyond that, you're getting 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, both pretty standard for mid-range phones like this. The handset is coming too early for Android 13, unfortunately, though it'll receive that update in due time. And Google has already confirmed that the 6a will continue to get updates for at least five years. Alongside all this Pixel talk, we were surprised with a preview of the new Pixel Watch. A couple of highlights here were the improved Wear OS UI, new Google Wallet integration, and new collaboration with Fitbit, with a rounded design to rival the Apple Watch. But the major upgrade here comes in the form of improved navigation. The new Pixel Watch has Google Maps built in, allowing you to navigate around without requiring you to have your phone on you. And last but certainly not least, we got the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro. And I hate that camera bar. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. The Pixel 6 camera bar was certainly polarizing when it first launched, 
but I have a feeling you lot are going to be even more divided on this one. We were expecting the Pixel 7 line to debut in October, and that's likely when we'll see the full launch and release, but we were pleasantly surprised to get this early glimpse. And it was a pretty hearty early glimpse too, so let's get into it. From the images we were shown, we can tell that the Google Pixel 7 Pro will have three lenses, while the Pixel 7 will get just two. This lines up to what happened with the Google Pixel 6 phones, though there may be some hardware upgrades as well. Both handsets will get the next generation version of the Google Tensor chipset that debuted in the 6 series. We weren't blown away with the Google Tensor chipset when testing out the Pixel 6, but that was first generation technology. This updated version should be a bit faster and perhaps will support some cool new camera modes. It isn't much to go on right now, but it's a lot more than we expected to know about the Google Pixel 7 phones this early in the year. Maybe Google is planning for the rest of the year to be full of little winks and teasers to the Google Pixel 7 line. Or maybe they're just fed up of us speculating on the new leaks that are appearing every week. Whatever it is, it has us interested to find out more. Thanks for watching. Remember to head down to those comments below and let me know what you think of the Google Pixel 7 announcement. While you're down there, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe to Tech Radar here on YouTube, and I'll see you on the next video.